Hello friends and family. Hello. In this video we're going to show you what we've been doing while talking about what we've been doing for the last week or so. Mm -hmm. In general we had a pretty big heat wave a week ago and it's finally yeah. cooled off again to 80 or below. We had a, I think, did we hit 100? 102. Hit 102 and that was hot. Um, but we were very lucky to have the creek down there mm -hmm. because you get down close to the water and in the water and the kind and of the, amb the ambient temperature becomes more like 75 yeah and the water is below 60 degrees you can get goosebumps no, you can on a 102 cold. degree day being down there in yeah. the water so can, it's great you can get cold in the water so that mm -hmm. was awesome so let's jump into what we've been doing uh, we did a big goat move so they moved into an area that includes where Harry and Ron had started and they, it is full of blackberries especially and Super some other cool. things. Mm -hmm. So we kind of bait them in with a bunch of grain mm -hmm. and then we basically it's a mad dash to move the fence from where it was to around them and the kids were a big help Super by helpful. hanging out near the goats and keeping them where we wanted them and it all went fine other than those step-in posts, we had to be working too close to the gravel driveway near the house and that was a bear. So I know for the future, never even plan to put the paddock near that. Just use the weed whacker on that kind of brush. Yeah, Jarvis had to get the pickaxe out and be able to yeah. loosen up the soil to be able to get some of them in. So that was a yep. big job for him. We were hot, kind of frustrated by the end, but we yep. did it and the kids were such a big help. Yeah, yeah. They kept the, the goats all together. So they yeah. did great. Yep, and every time we do something like that, we learn something. That was the first, mm -hmm. no, that was the second time we moved all six goats. All six goats that, with two lengths of goat fence. that was sets. the furthest we'd moved them. And it went great, and the goats are doing so good. They're eating like crazy in mm -hmm. that uh, area. How big is, how, what's the length of each? We have fence? two, we have two 150 foot long goat fences. So the total perimeter is 300 feet. And depending mm -hmm. on the shape you make, the mm -hmm. actual area you take up will vary. The, the, yes. So we try to make it fairly square because that mm -hmm. kind of optimizes how much area you can yeah, get. Yeah, and they have lots of great space, lots of green, right? Yep. Happy goats. My dad had bought us a seed starting kit that he really likes, and so we did that. You know, set up soil in these 192 cells and mm -hmm. then water it because the bag of soil is really dry, so you moisten it. And then we put in a bunch of fall seeds. A big mix of things. Kale, lettuce, spinach, some collard, so a lot of greens, but those do well in the cool fall. Yep. And so we'll be ready to do a mix of kind of planting where we have space in the existing garden and then adding new stuff or at, excuse me, expanding the garden and adding more. And then the seed starts already have come up, so we're super happy mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. And even more than you just saw in the footage, even more than you saw in the footage, uh, maybe we're approaching 50% of, of the pods have a seed mm -hmm. in them, so it's going really well. Yep, it's going really well. Olaf the dog. He is a very big presence in our family's <laughs> yeah. lives. Yeah, he's just really hugely kind of taken a big piece of our focus and it's great. So he's a big slobbery stinky dog so we washed him <laughs> for one thing. And After our first few days and we're like trying to, we're try and, and then we brushed him and he has the fluffiest most beautiful hair so that was so fun. Poor guy every time he sits down either or even lays down anywhere he just gets tons of brambles and yeah. brush on him. We've been introducing him to tucks more and more <laughs> and there's they take turns of who's more afraid of who. <laughs> Olaf is so <laughs> afraid of tucks sometimes <laughs> and tucks Tux has switched to just bolting and running away from him to kind of standing his ground but hissing at him. He hisses a lot. Tux hasn't, I haven't seen Tux take a swipe at him, but we've been working hard on that. Tux hasn't taken a swipe and Olaf has not growled or barked or done no. anything aggressive towards them. The closest we've him. got is like one sniffing the other. Mm -hmm. and they then, like touched whiskers one time. And then we introduced Olaf to the goats. And that went well. We, we baited the goats in with grain and they can't resist that. And then I basically brought Olaf in and was just holding on to him. And he was 
like with all these things, Olaf is so excited, but doesn't know how to like play it cool. Olaf, be cool. <laughs> he, he wanted he, to sniff he and get in, in, there. in there. He's sniffing those goats like they're another dog. Like he's sniffing their butt. He's sniffing everywhere, and the goats kind of tolerated it. And then some of them were more skittish than others. But you know, it was a chance to praise Olaf and kind of discipline a little bit when he. Mm -hmm was kind of spazzing out too much because the main thing we don't want him to do whether it's the goats the chickens the cats is he gets too fired up and like runs and lunges and chases and other animals that are half the size or less of Olaf are going to interpret that as aggressive and so we right. need him to calm down near the other yeah. animals. Yeah because all the all the animals we have right now are prey to dogs right and so they see Olaf not only as a dog but a big huge dog who's totally in their face yeah so sorry James was James don't do that gymnastics move that scared me bud please James <laughs> doing moves over there that I'm afraid he's gonna hurt himself I'm not. that scared me bud uh, another thing we did we finally wrapped up a little project we've been needing to get to for a <laughs> long time and that's insulating little nooks and crannies around the outside of the yurt if you watched way back when we were building the yurt platform we put that rigid foam insulation between all the beams, just big rectangles. But what we never got around to was filling in these funny little crescent shapes all around it. And so every shape is different. Yep, every shape is different. So you had to draw them, cut them, fit them in. If they don't fit, recut them. And so really glad mm -hmm. to get that done. And the follow-up that I need to get to, but it's not as urgent, is little spray foam insulation to fill in all the voids we can find both for just improving our insulation of the mm -hmm. earth and it might be a little bit of pest control make it less likely for bugs to walk up and to our yurt. Hi pumpkin. And then moving forward we're getting a few things we need for our kitchen project that's coming up. So the stove got delivered mm -hmm. and that was big. We've also got in the what? back of the truck a laundry, laundry sink that's going to go in the utility room. Mm -hmm and we'll be picking up a few more odds and ends. We're about a week and a half away from that project, but we're nervous and concerned because every time we talk to the cabinet guy, he's got another excuse for why things are delayed. So we're, we're really not sure if he's gonna be able to deliver when we need him to. We already delayed yeah. Gare coming out here to help us with the kitchen project once, and we really need this cabinet guy mm -hmm. to deliver, so we'll see. Yep. Gare would have been here right now. We would have been working on the kitchen already. Yep. So now that had to get punted almost two weeks, and come on, cabinet guy, get us our cabinets. Do this. <laughs> uh, and other than that, Tina and I sat down a little while ago and had kind of a brainstorming session, mm -hmm. and we have this list of priorities that we sorted by timeline. What needs to happen next week? What needs to happen in the next month? What needs to happen before winter? And what needs to happen kind of in the next year? And it helps us um, prioritize. It helps us plan. I know it'll help me kind of mentally handle all these things because I quickly learned when we got the property and started homesteading, the hardest thing by a mile is the fact that there's too many things that you can be doing and you don't have the time to be doing them all. Maybe you don't have the skills to be doing them all and you don't have the knowledge on how to do them all. So so writing it out and making a game plan is gonna be really good yep. for us to figure it out. And I need that. I'm not a very organized person by nature. So being able to have this instead of just saying, what am I going to do today and yeah. kind of bouncing from thing to thing this definitely so. helps me I think it'll have us have help us have more effective work days work weeks and just kind of over the long term it'll make a huge difference for how much we can get done around here and and just good mm -hmm. peace of mind a huge change we have coming up is another child coming in December nothing on this list is even close to dealing with the child coming but I think we got this I think the things that the baby needs are the same things we need. We need a working kitchen in here. Mm -hmm. We need a working um, wood stove wood in stove here. For warmth. And and that kind of thing. Yeah. Like the Getting stuff the baby needs is <laughs> you and warmth and food and the rest of us need that. It too. all falls so into place. Yep. Baby's fine. <laughs> Come on. Um big thing next week the we're we're gonna get that great Pyrenees puppy and 
her mother. So <laughs> two more dogs. Are we crazy? Yes. Why are we getting so many dogs so fast? We're just going for it. All of just kind of fell yeah, in our laps. Maybe, honestly, maybe we should have said no to rescuing Olaf, but he's a sweet boy. And I think over the long term, we're going to be really glad mm -hmm. we have him. But we're biting off a lot right now with all these dogs because they're yeah. a lot of work. Yeah. But I think it'll pay off. And so we're, we're doing a lot of preparing for and then acquiring those dogs. Um, we want to be working on the garden, getting some more compost and wood chips and expand the garden out to get some fall stuff and in. So we can put those seedlings that we have going already yep. out and in the garden. And then we need to prepare for when Gare gets here and Tina's dad's planning to come and help too. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be doing kitchen stuff, your utility room stuff, you know, a lot of electrical, electrical especially. And so I need to talk to Gare and have a game plan for having as much supply acquisition done as possible so that when we're, they're here, we're not spending too much time running around to hardware stores yeah. and just jumping on work. Um, yeah. So that's in the next week. And if you're interested in big picture, what are the things we're thinking about next month? Um, a bunch of stuff for the yurt. We need to get vents installed. We're, we're fine in the dry summer, the yurt's doing great. But one of the things you have to be careful with about yurts is moisture. And so a bathroom vent, and some kind of kitchen vent are going to be key to help cycle moisture out and then long term through the winter um, a wood stove running a wood stove in a space really dries it out so that'll That'll help be a lot good. too we need to get that your kitchen done we're thinking a lot about goat fencing i want to do some kind of project out by the pond five to ten acres of a big fenced area where we can just leave the goats in a big area and the the new dogs if we think they just need one big area and then we can do the whole thing with the portable fencing within that area but mm -hmm. it'll be kind of a, a fail safe too and um, what else is going on next month uh, a lot of dog training we've got to train the new dogs and Olaf pretty much continuously if we want if we want the amount of kind of mental real estate these dogs take up in our lives right now if we want that to get better they need to be really well-trained dogs. You know, right now Olaf's in his crate in the shop so that we can be doing this. Once he's really well-trained, he could just be loose outside right now and he would be fine. Yep, and I think the mom and baby dog, we're always talking with other people and you know, what can help us with these goats? What can help us with safety? You know, uh, predators like cougars and stuff like that, pre or things like deer, keeping those away from the property that we don't want, chewing up our garden or hurting our goats. People are always saying, you need a dog, and yeah. so the so we're specifically that. these guard dogs we're getting, mm -hmm. the mom and the puppy are a breed, they're mostly Great Pyrenees, and it's a livestock guardian dog. They're bred to protect livestock in an area, and so they're going to be a huge asset to us once they're well-trained and kind of acclimated to the area, but it's going to be a lot of work getting them ready. And our main concern is making sure that the adult dog doesn't roam away. That's kind of the big yeah. concerns with livestock guardian dogs and why normal situations you wouldn't want them is they're prone to roaming around because they were their the breeds were developed, you know, a thousand plus years ago when shepherds would be out in a valley, you know, for miles and miles of just the dog and the sheep and the shepherd and the dogs needed to protect them from all sorts of things. So these dogs kind of are prone to wander and find things to protect and things to drive away for far, from far and wide. So we've got to figure out ways to make sure the dog stays here. So perimeter fencing would be one of the things. There's electrical tethering systems that I'll be interested in and also just good training of the dog, kind of probably frequently mm -hmm. walking. Okay, this is your domain. This is where you hang out. Yep. We'll get that figured out. Yep. Um, also in the next month, I should keep cutting firewood to make sure I've got more than enough for this winter. I, I've got some parts to fix the a part of the three-point hitch on the tractor broke and I need some replacement parts for that and then I can get back to mowing. You've got tons mm -hmm. and tons of mowing to do. We're in the dry season so there's certain, I think right now you have to mow before 10 a.m. or after 8 p.m. On our 10-day forecast, there's no rain coming up. 
Um, so we just have to be careful about that when we do it and kind of plan yep. that, really plan that into our day to not yeah. be willing to leave out when but we do it. Being able to mow again will be huge. Where I can just chip away at it an hour here and there will make a, mm -hmm. make a huge difference. And all the work that you've done already mowing, you want to keep up on that so right. that maintain. we don't, so we can maintain it. Yep. And then we want to be doing things in the yurt like, uh, like shelving and a kitchen island and I'm thinking about a built-in desk in our bedroom, a little built-in desk. So and Aria's starting school, so we want a nice organized space where she's going to be starting with distance learning, that she can do that and have her yep. space to learn and thrive. Ready for your school spot? Okay. Yep. I'm okay. Um, before winter, big projects. The, the biggest one is fixing up our road, our access road that comes out from the county road all the way up to the home site it's about a quarter mile long and in the winter there's a rut on the lower side of the drive that basically becomes a little stream and that is not good on your road so we need to get that fixed up there will be dirt work with the tractor and the excavator correcting that smoothing out the road and then having a grade and digging a drainage ditch next to it a little channel where instead of water flowing in a rut in the road, it'll go off of the road mm -hmm. and flow in a ditch. And then once that's all done, we need to get a bunch of gravel brought. Um, I want to make sure my Honda Civic can make it up that road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've got, we need a, a full stockpile of firewood for the winter and have it covered. I need to, our, our water line that we've got to the yurt is still in a temporary state basically where it's sitting on the surface mm -hmm. and by winter we need to trench that underground. I need to build kind of a housing unit around our worm composting system that comes off of the yurt to make sure the worms don't freeze in the winter. And of course we need to have a wood stove installed. We ordered the wood stove. Yeah, we this did that week. this past week. We're really excited about it. We ordered a nice yodel wood stove. Um, the junky house that's on the property, we need to waterproof it. There's broken windows and the skylight leaks some. And we need to correct that before it spends another winter getting even moldier and more gross. Yep. So that's something that before the rainy season we need to get out there and take care of that. Um, I want some kind of temporary way to store the excavator, the tractor, and the equipment under something. I think in the short term that might be as simple as some big tarps, mm -hmm. but we'll see. Maybe we can build a simple shed, but Tina and I were talking about we want a really nice shed slash shop that can fit all that stuff. So maybe we don't rush into building mm -hmm. kind of a mediocre shed. Let's do something very temporary for this winter and then... Where do you draw the line between putting up a tarp and then building a whole building. Yeah. You don't want to put too much effort so into it. At this let's point. wait and build a really nice one. Yeah. Um, then in the next year, we want to be working on the pond. A lot of, a lot of scrubby little trees and weeds and stuff around the pond. We want to clear out, maybe even empty the pond sometime to get a look at the trash and mud and whatever's on the bottom. Um, we need to clear out the Junker house, get all the trash out of it, and start figuring out what are we going to do with job. it. Are we going to remodel that thing? Are we going to demolish it? What are we going to do with it? We'll have to start figuring that out in the next mm -hmm. year. And that's it. Just a few things. Yeah. <laughs> so we got our hands full. Yeah. But having this next week, you know, what are our priorities? What can we wake up and start working on tomorrow? Yeah. So I think we'll have, this is a really good plan and will keep us going and keep us focused yep and we're having a good time you know we can <coughs> we can just get to the essentials of this and be fine you know if we've got a wood stove and a kitchen in this yurt we'll be good to go for the whole next year you know yep. and oh, everything else is a bonus thought of something for next year a deck on the yurt oh I yeah i can't a wait for a deck on the yurt next year yurt so deck. Yeah. You know, a place for, we don't want our animals inside, but our dogs can lay outside on the deck, place to grill outside, right outside the yurt, yeah, and hang out huge. with friends. A nice deck off of the yurt is just going to really extend the living space of the yurt. And it'll help keep the yurt cleaner because, you know, we're just coming up from dirt onto some little set of stairs straight into the front of the yurt. Um, yep. And with all the rain and mud coming up, I know that's going to be a challenge, but we'll do it. James wants a wood-fired hot tub. So wood-fired we'll hot someday. tub. Someday.
I put. <laughs> all right. Thanks for sticking with us through all that yakking. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, over the next couple of years, you'll get to see everything on that list happen and everything. more. And more. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> see you. <ya>. Bye. <laughs>